is. I know you can fix this. Give them back! Take me instead. The 2015 film Krampus sees family attempt to defend their home from the onslaught of the monstrous Krampus and his minions. Eventually, Max, the protagonist of the film, learns to appreciate his family and Krampus reunites him with them, but only after dropping him into a fiery bottomless pit. But what is Krampus? The filmmakers didn't just pull the creature out of their own bottomless pits. Krampus is actually a creature from Austro-Bavarian folklore, who acts as a kind of anti santa There are essentially three parts to the modern Krampus tradition. Firstly, there's the Einkerbrau, or house visits. On the 5th of December, Krampusnacht, St. Nicholas visits the houses of children to bless them, discuss how good or bad the children have been, and distribute gifts. But accompanying him is the shaggy, goat-horned Krampus, with cloven hooves and chains that hang from his wrists. With him, he carries a bundle of birch rods and coal, which he gives to naughty children. He also carries a bag on his back, where he supposedly puts children who have been particularly bad, and carries them away, perhaps to a local river, or perhaps, as the children fear, straight to hell. Secondly, there are the Nicholas plays and catechism. In public places or private venues, St. Nicholas will give a formal speech and a general blessing, followed up by testing the religious education of the audience's children, their knowledge of their prayers, etc. He also calls out the bad behaviour of children whose parents are taught him beforehand. Throughout all of this, Krampus looks on to encourage good behaviour. And when Nicholas has finished his judgement, rewards and punishments are meted out in the form of sweets and stern warnings. And finally, the Freilauf. Public parades and free runs take place, where groups of masked Krampuses run through the streets, interacting with the unmasked general public, getting drunk and often making nuisance of themselves. But where did this tradition of the frightening anti-Santa creature come from? Contrary to what much of the internet has to say about it, Krampus probably has very little to do with pre-Christian religions. But the questions of Krampus's exact origin are complex and involve a number of different traditions over hundreds of years. For a start, we need to go back to medieval Europe. In the beginning, there were miracle plays. Common throughout medieval Europe with specific hotspots like York in England, miracle plays focused on religious drama with an emphasis on scenes from the Bible and the lives of the saints. Particularly popular were plays recounting the legends and miracles of Saint Nicholas, which, as the scholar Holly Carter points out, link him, Saint Nicholas, variously to children, gift giving, and devils, all elements found later in Nicholas slash Krampus mummy. In and around these miracle plays were the medieval Fashnak, or carnival celebrations, in which people ran around in devil masks in much the same way as the Krampusnack processions of the modern day see people running around in Krampus masks. It's in this context that we see the Council of Basel denounce the practice of drunkenly visiting houses as a billy goat in 1418, following it up with the announcement that, To those among them who run in service as devils, our lords mean to say to you that they do not want that anyone should run devil-wise into the churches or in the city, whereby God's services become hindered and confused. And finally there were the Boyd Bishop celebrations. On either the 28th of December Feast of Holy Innocents, or the 5th of December St. Nicholas's Day, depending on the region or era, choir boys would elect a boy to become bishop for one day. Students were exempted from lessons, fed a special meal, and allowed a certain amount of authority over older clerics. This ritual inversion of hierarchy was not new, as forms of it have been practiced around New Year's as far back as the Mesopotamian New Year festival, Zagmuk, when the king had been stripped of his power and a mock king crowned. The mock king was then ritually sacrificed so he could help the god Marduk fight the forces of chaos, renewing the world for another year. However, the boy bishop was not sacrificed, as sacrificing humans to please God wasn't a thing medieval Christians were too keen on outside of ritually burning heretics, and the tradition gradually grew more and more transgressive, eventually extending outside the cloisters and into the general community. In an effort to curb the extravagances of the boy bishops and their retinues, around 1300 the day was moved to St. Nicholas's Day on the 6th of December. However, this clearly didn't work, as in 1307, the people of Worms complained to the bishop about the wicked high spirits of the schoolboys during their advent bishop play. So, we have St. Nicholas being portrayed alongside the devil, large processions of people running around in devil masks, the visiting of houses dressed as a billy goat, and the centering of St. Nicholas's day. We can see the various elements of the modern day Krampus tradition spread throughout different customs in the medieval era. But how did they all come together? From around 1400, Fashnak became more popular, and devil masks became increasingly common, not only on Fashnak, but all around the Christmas period, from as early as St. Martin's Day on the 11th of November. The role of the boy bishop diminished as both students and apprentices began to roam the streets with their devil masks, and the practice was spread by these groups from town to town. By 1507, St. Nicholas was bringing gifts to children, a practice known as Einlegen. 
This was possibly meant as a reward for fasting well, as Johannes Bomus wrote in 1520 that a number of children fast so well on St. Nicholas that one needs must give them something to eat. Bomus further explains that parents left edible gifts from St. Nicholas in the shoes of children, which they set out underneath the table. Some of the edible goods included cookies moulded to look like the Kinderfresser, which looked like this. As you can see, the Kinderfresser carried with him a bag with which to carry children, not unlike the bag that Krampus carries to take bad children to the river or Helen. Later, and into the modern era, Krampus cookies would also be made. During the Counter-Reformation, especially throughout the 1540s to 1560s, there was a renewal of emphasis on the veneration of saints, and Saint Nicholas plays again became popular. But instead of miracle plays which focused on the legends attached to Saint Nicholas, the plays had much more in common with everyman morality plays, which focused on personal accountability for your deeds, and the importance of choosing virtue over vice. These plays included a speech by St. Nicholas, who tested the children in the audience on their ability to say their prayers, and a follow-up speech by Lucifer, rather than Krampus, who derided parents for failing to discipline their children, ending with devils leaping out of the audience. The connection between the 16th to 19th century morality plays and the modern-day Krampus tradition of Nicholas plays and catechism discussed earlier is clear, as is the connection between Krampus and the devil, as Krampus's part is, in these older plays, played by Lucifer. From the 17th century onwards, we begin to see the practice of a more child-centred custom of house visiting grow out of the tradition of leaving gifts to children in shoes. The appearance of St. Nicholas at the door added an element of dramatisation to the gift-giving ceremony, which allowed a more personalised judgement of the individual child than could be had at the more public Nicholas plays or catechism. In the 18th century, the St. Nicholas house visit began to replace the tradition of leaving gifts in shoes, although sometimes the Nicholas actor failed to set a great example for children. In 1729, it was observed that occasionally, the Nicholas is drunk and falls down the stairs. It's important to note here that St. Nicholas was, in these early days, accompanied not by Krampus, but by a number of angels and devils on his house visiting rounds. So, it's clear that Krampus's position in Austro-Bavarian folklore was as a replacement for the devil, but when did this transition take place? During the Enlightenment, with a growing middle class, the Nicholas traditions began to be secularised. The focus shifted from testing the soul and the choice between heaven and hell, to focusing on the child's accountability to his immediate family. It is perhaps due to this secularisation that the devil began to shift into something less obviously Christian. Take this 1816 account from Bregenz in Wildmode, for example. A man who is supposed to represent Saint Nicholas, usually in priestly dress, and a pair of boys as acolytes. A second is dressed in the mask of a fawn, and thus they visit the houses of their community on the evening of Nicholas Day, in order to remind children who the first person is doing good and through the latter, to be certain to frighten them when they do not obey St. Nicholas. Here the Krampus figure is represented not as a devil, but as a fawn. Although he has been referred to as Krampus in other places as early as the 17th century, this particular account gives us an insight into how the transition from devil to Krampus may have occurred earlier elsewhere. And so today, there is Krampus. Not a creature from the depths of pagan Europe, but an outgrowth of the secularisation of more recent, but still centuries old, Christian traditions. But just because Krampus is only a few hundred years old, the same does not hold true of the darker side of Christmas. After all, as far back as 4,000 years ago, human sacrifice played a part in New Year celebrations, as the Mesopotamians sent their own champion to help their god fight for the renewal of the land. And beyond that, who knows what traditions have been forgotten, lost within the mists of time. What's your favourite Christmas tradition? Leave a comment below, and don't forget to like and subscribe to see future content. A big shout out to my patrons who help support the channel. If you want to join them and see videos sooner and join our community discord, check out my Patreon in the description of the video. I'll see you next time.